Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is another recent purchases update video. I am sharing with you my hits, my misses, and I think there's one maybe as well. So I hope you guys enjoy this and let's get started. Just two quick sale notifications. Both are happening at 24 Sevra. So the first one is their friends and family event. Sadly, this one isn't available in the UK and France, but it is available everywhere else. And that includes the US, Canada, Australia, Europe, Asia. So pretty much everywhere except the UK and France. And it's a really generous discount. So this is a spend more, save more discount. So if you spend $600, then you take 200 off. But if you spend $900, then you take a huge $300 off. So if you plan your spend accordingly, you can get 33% off full price new season items, which is absolutely amazing. There are lots of gorgeous summer ready pieces, lots of great sandals, lots of raffia bags, Chloe bags, Valentino included, some gorgeous coach styles as well. I did also see my Chloe mini Marcy in the light blue has been re-released and that one is included as well. Such a beautiful color, but there are so many gorgeous items. So I will link all the details for that down below, as well as the blog post I have covering it. And also at 24 Sevra, there has been a Louis Vuitton restock. So 24 Sevra is actually owned by LVMH, who of course owns Louis Vuitton. So 24 Sevra do actually get in Louis Vuitton items and there's a discount code that works on them as well. I've not checked the stock selection in a while and they have some gorgeous items in. Tons of bags, lots of really, really stunning pieces. The code doesn't work off every single item, but it does work off the vast majority. I had a good look through and I think I saw like 170 different bags bags and accessories, just so many beautiful items. So I will link that landing page so you can see everything down below if you wanted to check it out. I'll also pop in the discount code details. But I did also do a blog post rounding this one up if you did want to see my picks. So first up is a belt favorite. Um, so this is my new Celine belt, which if you've been following my videos recently, you may have seen me wear this one, maybe two dozen times because I have been a little bit obsessed with it. But it's just so cute, I absolutely love it. And this was definitely more of like a nerve wracking purchase for me just because I am fine spending this amount of money on like, you know, a major accessory or a bag, but for a belt, it was just a lot of money. I had never spent this much money on a belt before and essentially, you know, it's just a little bit leather with a logo. So I don't feel like you're getting, you know, an incredible design or craftsmanship of a leather bag. Um, but I'm very, very happy to say that I have actually been getting more than my fair share of usage out of it. It seems to go with absolutely everything. I mean, teaming it with tailored trousers and shorts and denim, like it does seem to go with it all. Weirdly enough, I've not actually teamed it with too many skirts and dresses, um, but when the occasion arises, I'm sure I will. Um, it does seem to be pretty versatile. I did just get it in the plain black leather with the gold logo right there. And I really like it. Um, it just kind of loops her as well. So it's a very neat kind of clean finish. So when you kind of fasten it right there, you actually thread the belt loop through the logo and then that's how you tuck it in. So there aren't any kind of loose ends. It is a very, very streamlined look, which I really like. I did go up a size um, and that enables me to wear it both as a lower waist belt and also higher up, which I also really, really like. And for me, it's just been such a winner. Like I really have been loving wearing it and loving teaming it with all manner of items. It's such an easy way to elevate your look as well. Like even if you're wearing just high street items, pop this on. I think it just gives everything an instant upgrade and I'm just a huge fan of it. So definitely a huge hope for me. I've been loving this belt so much. Next up is my Louis Vuitton Capucine bag, and I cannot remember if I featured this in my previous recent purchases update video, um, but regardless of whether I did or not, uh, I felt the need to include it again because it has been like my ultimate favorite bag recently. And to be fair, I've had it now for five months, I guess. And I'd say it's definitely in my top three most used bags. Like it's what I grab when I'm not really sure what bag to go for. And it's like, well, it's gonna be this because I absolutely love using it. It's fairly practical, which is kind of surprising because I feel like bags like this, you don't always go for, for the practicality. Whereas this has been just so practical, so functional, and I just love wearing it. I feel like it goes with everything as well. So if you wanted to team it with a little dress, with a skirt, you could do and be all ladylike. But if you wanted to dress up denim, I think it works fantastically well. Looks good with tailored trousers. Like it really does seem to, it just blend in with everything, it elevates everything as well, and it's just the most versatile bag I've had in a while. And I just can't say enough good things. And this is despite the fact that, as I mentioned in a previous video, 
I'm not a huge fan of bags with dividers and this does have a big divider, but actually it's still quite roomy. So you do get a lot of room in here, even though it doesn't look like a huge bag. It's very, very comfortable to wear as well. You know, I wear it very comfortably with the top handle. I also wear it the long strap as well. And I just can't get enough. I just absolutely love this. So if you have been on the fence like I have, because I feel like I've been thinking about this bag for a good five years, I would highly recommend. I'd also highly recommend getting pre-loved because I have been seeing bits of wear and tear and I don't mind as much because I didn't spend as much as I would have done if I bought it full price retail. Um, I think that would have been a completely different story. But I did get this for a good price pre-loved and I'm really happy with all aspects of it. So if you're thinking about getting one pre-loved, I would definitely recommend if you can find a good one. But yeah, I've been so happy with this. It's been an absolute favorite for me. I just can't get enough. And speaking of bags, which just absolutely delight my Gucci horse fit, I have been loving this thing so much. It is just absolutely stunning. Like it is a work of art. And I feel like Gucci more than any other brand really do their hardware so beautifully, but also just their bag design so beautifully. They are really expensive, um, but I just think the attention to detail is on a whole nother level and they really do feel like works of art that you can carry. And I just love this so much. So I did go for the sparkly hardware and I was a bit worried that might limit its usage for me because, you know, it is a little bit fancy looking, but actually I've been wearing this every opportunity I can. So I've worn this to date night. I've worn this to a nice lunch. Like it does seem to be fairly versatile because I guess I also got white on white. So it doesn't feel kind of too in your face. Maybe that might change if you go for a brighter color, um, but certainly in the more neutral colors, I think it works beautifully. And this clasp is just so stunning. It sparkles in the prettiest way. It also holds a surprising amount as well. The weight is very good because it's lined in fabric. So it actually feels like nothing. So it's very, very comfortable to wear. And like that big wide open space is so great. It's very, very roomy. And I just think it's the most stunning bag. Like I've been so happy with it. It is just the prettiest thing. And I just feel like Gucci are nailing it at the moment. And this has just been such a pleasant surprise. Next up is my Loewe puzzle, and this has been so great. And I, I'd say this one probably more than my other favorites isn't as perfect to me in terms of the design and the functionality. Like they're quite obvious bugbears for me, but at the same time, I love the look and the style enough and it's comfortable enough for me to wear that I can kind of look past my little niggles. Um, so the two main ones for me are, I wish that the top handle was a little bit larger in terms of the drop, like it's quite a close handle. And for me, I would just prefer something that had a little bit more room between kind of the top of the bag and the actual handle. And then the second, and this is by far my biggest bugbear, is that the opening isn't particularly wide. I would have much preferred the opening to come down to the sides, just so you're not scraping your hand when you get things in and out. Now, this isn't as much of a big deal with this size, which is the small size, but when it comes to the mini, that is definitely a factor. I did say that I would do a comparison between the two, and I will do that, um, but... As a little sneak peek on my thoughts. The opening is doable with this size, but with the mini size, it does begin to get a little bit frustrating that you can't access that bag as easily as maybe you'd want to. So same kind of opening, it's just less of a big deal when the size is a little bit bigger. You can, despite the opening, fit in a surprising amount in here. And because it's lined in fabric, it isn't too heavy to carry either, despite the fact that you're getting a full leather bag on the exterior. And I love how minimal it looks, especially with my collection, which, you know, it is quite logo centered. I love the fact this does feel a little bit more minimal. It does feel like more of an in the know bag. So if you know this bag, you're probably really into handbags, even little details like the little zip on the bag. I just think it's so beautiful. I'm really happy with the colorway as well. You know, I think the darker beige with the gold is just a really, really pretty neutral. I feel like it goes so easily with pretty much everything in my wardrobe. And it has been the bag that I grabbed when I want something that's just a little bit more under the radar. And this has just been the perfect choice. So even though I feel like I'm so late to this party, I do get the hype. Um, I know lots of people prefer the original versus the edge, which I believe this one is, but I don't have experience with that one and I've been really happy with this one and yeah, I've just been really, really enjoying it and I just feel like it's been such a breath of fresh air for my bag collection. And last but not least for my favorites, I do have my Saint Laurent Supple 5 to 7 or Sonka set bag. I did a update on this, I think it was in February, so it's a few months later now. And I've got to say, I have still been really, really loving this bag and it's kind of replaced a tote bag as my daily bag um, for 
probably the last five years, I've always had a tote bag on the go, just like my grab and go style. Uh, whereas I've switched into this and I've actually really enjoyed doing so. It just feels a little bit more dressy and pulled together than a kind of open tote style. And I've actually not minded the fact that it's not been quite as open on the top because it's actually still a very, very easy access. As I mentioned in other videos where I've talked about this, I love the fact that you do have the YSL logo there. But if you want to be a little bit more under the radar, you can just tuck it in and it's just a completely kind of neutral bag, no logos, no flashiness. And I just really, really like that. The leather has been holding up very well as well. So I have definitely not babied this and I don't really feel like it's a bag that you necessarily want to baby. You know, this is definitely more of an everyday style. So if I had to baby it, I think I would be probably a little bit resentful of the bag. Whereas that's not been the case at all. You know, I've been grabbing this and just heading out the door, putting all manner of things inside, putting groceries inside sometimes and it's done just great. Um, it's definitely helped by the fact that it has a very thick strap. So even when you do load it down, it's still very, very comfortable. I never get any digging on the shoulder because it's that nice piece of flat leather. So it just sits beautifully. It really balances the weight very nicely. And I just think it's great, like really, really lovely. Um, the smaller size is great as well if you are a little bit more petite. For me, this is the perfect size. It's huge and fits a ton, but at the same time, I don't feel like it drowns me when I'm wearing it. And if you're looking at this bag, I would definitely recommend. Like, I've really, really been enjoying it. It's just so nice to have a slightly smart looking everyday bag. And now for a maybe, and this one is definitely a mixed one because I actually really love the style. Um, if you watch my Barbados vlog, I talked about it then and it's the bag I pretty much used every single day on holiday. Like I loved it so much. It seemed to go with everything as well, no matter what I was wearing, whether that was shorts, a pair of jeans, a sundress, like whatever it was, it seemed to go. And I just loved it. You know, it's very, very comfortable to wear. You have these generous leather straps, so you do just sit flat on the shoulder. You have that great kind of raffia basket tote look, but it is dressed up with the leather trim. And I just thought it was fantastic, like so gorgeous. The only reason why it's not a complete and utter hit is that I have noticed that it has begun to be a little bit misshapen on one side, but I want to caveat that by saying that I do think I need to take responsibility for that because I definitely use this bag to its max. I put in anything that I wanted in here. It was way down quite a bit on a lot of days. I had Leo stuff in there, my stuff, sometimes Dan stuff. So I would pack this completely full. And ultimately, I don't think that bags like this are meant and designed to carry a ton of items. They're meant to be, you know, some holiday and beach bags. So maybe a few lighter items. And that's pretty much it. So on this side, it is completely fine in terms of the shape, but on this side, it is beginning to bolt a little bit, a few centimeters from the base. And that's purely down to me overpacking it and carrying items that are simply too heavy for the design. So hands up, I definitely did that. Um, I think in future, I might think twice about taking this away with me just because I do tend to need bags to do it all, especially with, you know, a little toddler now. They come with a lot of stuff. I'm gonna need to carry more things. And when I compare it to something like my Chloe Woody tote, I feel like that is just indestructible in terms of you can pack it full and it seems to always be fine. And that's ultimately what I need for my holiday bag. So if you know that you only need to carry quite light things, then I would definitely still recommend this. I think it's beautiful. But if you're maybe like me, you carry a lot or you have a lot of people that put things in your bag, then I wouldn't say this is the best choice because it is definitely susceptible to weight and general wear and tear. And finally I have my misses and sadly it is a Chanel miss which I feel like are probably the most painful misses because they are so expensive um, but I've not really been getting along with this bag which is so sad because I have been eyeing this bag for so so long and to be fair I don't want to rule out this style completely but I don't think I got the right size for me. I didn't try this on before I got it. I actually got it through my brother so my brother went to the boutique because he lives near one and I don't um, and he did an adorable a try and shot. I shared a photo before but I'll show it again because it's too funny um, but he tried on the mini and then the small size which is what this is and he was like definitely get the small the mini is is too small and I'm very glad that he advised me on that because I find this a little bit small to be honest so I definitely would have found the next size down even smaller um but honestly I find this just a little bit of an awkward size so my biggest kind of bug there I think is the strap I just think that the strap is too short for the kind of bag that it is and it feels like whenever I go to grab it it kind of feels like I'm playing dress up with it 
I just don't always love the way it looks. I've only worn this a handful of times, but I've picked it up way more than that to wear it. And every time I do, I put it back in favor of something else because again, it feels a little bit childlike on me and I just don't love the way it looks on me and my body and proportions. I think it probably would work on someone who is a bit more petite than me, but I'm 5'7", so I'm probably a little bit more on the taller side. And yeah, there's just something not quite right for me. Um, in terms of the functionality, like it is absolutely fine. Like it does have a divider, but it's roomy enough that I can fit in my essentials. I'm certainly not fitting in a large wallet, but in terms of a small coin purse, my phone, keys, lipsticks, that sort of thing, it's absolutely fine. So I don't really have any issues with the actual interior, apart from the fact that I would always rather not have a divider. I like the detailing on it. I like the fact that it has feet. You know, there is a lot to really enjoy about this bag. Even the little pocket at the back, like it's all very Chanel-esque, but I just don't really love the proportions. And I do feel like a lot of these issues might be fixed with the neck size up, but I'm not sure what the shoulder strap drop is on the neck size up. So if you have that, please let me know in the comment section. Um, but yeah, I have definitely found this to be a little bit awkward. If you see what I mean, let me know in the comment section. Maybe I'm just being overly critical. It is a really expensive bag, so I do kind of have high expectations of it and certainly how much I would want to wear it. But this is definitely one that I continually go for. You know, I always go to grab it, but it always seems to go back on the shelf because it just doesn't seem to sit quite right on me. Um, and then last but not least, I have a purchase, which I'm not sure if it quite counts as luxury. I mean, they were quite expensive, um, but they're not kind of traditional luxury, but I thought I'd mention them because these mean such a dud. Um, so these are a strappy sandal from Reese. I actually got these because I wanted the Jean Vito Rossi ones. They have a style which is very, very similar to this, but those are like 720 pounds, which is a lot of money to spend on sandals. I probably have too many Jean Vito Rossi shoes already. So I was like, Amy, be sensible, go for the cheaper ones. So I saw these ones from Reese and these were 150 pounds. So a great deal cheaper than the Jean Vito Rossi's but I hate these so much. They are so uncomfortable and it's the kind of discomfort that you only realize once you've actually worn them out. You know, when I first tried them on, they were absolutely fine. I love the fact that it was a manageable heel height, a block heel, so hopefully very comfortable. And they did have a lot of straps, which generally speaking means that the more stable your foot is, the more comfortable the shoe. And I wanted a warmer weather sandal that had a little bit of height that I could wear with a ton of different dresses and these were just so uncomfortable. I think I went to lunch in these the first time. I was sat down for most of the lunch as well, and my feet were in agony by the end of the day. The straps just really dug in, my foot didn't feel particularly secure in them, and these are just a complete dud. So after that first time, I haven't worn them, and I'm kicking myself because obviously these are the cheaper option, but I would have very happily put this 150 pounds towards the Jambita Rossi ones, which, I still want, should have listened to my own advice, um, but I thought I could go for a cheaper option, they still work and they just haven't. So definitely would avoid if you were looking at these. I love Reese so much, but I don't feel like they do good shoes. Um, and yeah, this has definitely been a really sad dud and failure. So that wraps up today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As usual, I will include links to everything I mentioned in the description section below. If you enjoy recent purchases, updates, videos, please do give us a thumbs up. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.